G'day guys, Jason Nick here from the Outer Farm. As you can see, we're on the trial property today. We're cryovacking all the meat from that recent kill we just done on Ostia. So the butchering happened today, so now we're in the cryovacking process. We're probably on a, a couple of hours into it. So we'll run you through the process on what we do when we cryovac. And heck, because we took a while, we probably took one or two kills and then we got a system in place. The process we got in place is I sit here and I'll make up all the bags. That's right, you sit down, don't you, Dale? Someone's got to do the hard job, Dale, you know what it's like. Yeah. So I pre-make these bags, and as you can see, from the couple of kills we have done, I've made up a cut list. It's going to be hard to see, that fan's sort of making shadows, but that's a cut list on all the steaks and all the cuts and sausages and mince and all the different cuts, the size of bags we need, the length and the width. So from that, I can pre-make the bag. So I made a heap of bags there for Nick, put those rump in. I normally label them rump, but I made them in advance. So if we don't use them for rump, it's the same size we use for the rib fillet, the rump, the cube steak, and a kilo of diced chuck and mince. So we label them as we go. But what we found is you must label them in that dry state. We found out once you put the cold meat into it and the condensation on the bag, you can't write on it, or if you do, it sort of rubs off within a couple of months in the freezer. We learnt that do them dry. You can either write them straight on there with a permanent marker. We've also had success with cloth tape. So we, when we first trialled it, we had cloth tape and we also marked the bags and they both stayed on. So at the moment, we're just going straight with the permanent marker and not worry about the cloth tape. But we tried plenty of tapes and the cloth tape was the only one that stuck to the bag. So when we come to the second station, what Nick's doing here is she sorts out all the meat. So at the moment she's going for a rump. So they're big bits of rump. So she's cutting those in half. So we're getting, out of that one rump, we get two meals for two people. And then we cry back it in the meal lot. So out of one rump, we'll get two people have a feed out of the one rump. So Nick will try and cut them in half. And then what she does then is she comes over here, puts it in the bag, and then she seals it and puts it straight back into eskies back on ice so what, what did you do again Doug? what do you do again i'll do the hard job here which is sitting here making sure you're doing the right thing yeah. and making the cryback bags it sounds easy but there's a lot of pressure in that chair because if if these bags aren't cut to length yes right i hear about it and it and and it and when i'm in here about it it's endless oh, the, the, the the complaints from that department are substantial there's no complaints in this department it's all from this department yeah, right. what we've also found to make the job easier is when the butchers are cutting up the meat we label on what's going in what esky so obviously in this one it's got mince and offal this one over here we got top side steak for barbecue so in other words that's been cubed we've got t-bones osabuku blade barbecue steak so I'm assuming that's gone through also the Cuba, the tenderizer, rib fillet. The esky over here, we've got rump, roast, barbecue steak, stewing steak, eye fillet, and brisket. We've done the oxtail, we've done beef cheeks, and we've done the Y bones. Why that's important is when Nick's grabbing, working through an esky, I can revert to my cut list, and I can be pre-cutting, because we only sort of trying to do one esky at a time, so I can be pre-cutting ahead of time, the bags. If we didn't have that, I wouldn't know what bags to cut to what size and would be all over the shop. We've since found out the mobile butcher let us know that you can actually buy pre-made bags. So they come sealed at one end. And I reckon that's 50% of my job or 50% of the whole task time is making the sealed bags. We used to do it a couple of days before and they're ready to go, but we run out of time. But it's still taking time a couple of days before when you can be doing something else. And I think they're a little bit dearer, but time is money. If it takes us several hours of, of making these bags, why wouldn't you just buy pre-sealed bags? And they come in various widths and various lengths. So I can be have the pre-made bags and just go off my cut list. Nick can be packing them and just stacking them up and I can be crybacking them. I reckon I could probably go one for one. And if we didn't and we started to get a chain of bags here, we could both stop and cry back because we've got two machines. That way we're not keeping the meat out of the esky for too long off ice. We're gonna try that, but once we get through all these rolls, we're gonna give it a crack. We've probably got maybe another kill 
left with these rolls and then we're going to try, buy, try buying the pre-made bags. It should be a load fast and we'll, we'll do a review on that once we do do it as well. We've also found when you're marking the dryback bags, we've used permanent markers before and it rubs off. It only lasts three to four months. The ones we've got in the moment in here last well over 12 months. That's because Artline make, this one's called Artline Freezer Bag Marker. So it's, I'll bring up the camera, I hope I can use in the view there. So look for the Artline and it says Freezer Bag Marker. So it's definitely, Definitely worthwhile getting because obviously it's made for cryogenic conditions and that doesn't rub off any of them. Like I said, we tried the tape and the marker. The tape's still on, the cloth tape like I mentioned, and the art line marker is still on with the freezer bag type permit marker. So that's why we're just going now with the permit marker only and not putting the tape on. And what we decide to do with our cube steak, the stuff that's not really a table steak, but we haven't had an issue. All our steaks have been tender, rather it be cubed or whether it be for, for stir fry. But with our cube steak, what we write on our bags is crumb, barbecue or burger, which means you can crumb it, you can have it straight on a barbecue with salad, or sometimes we use it for burger steaks. So when we pull out, we've got three options. Rather than thinking about it, it's already on the bag. It's day two of bagging, it's the, obviously it's the next morning now. Last night it was 12 hours solid. We started at 9.30 in the morning when the mobile butcher left and we finished at 9.30 last night. The only thing we didn't do were the sausages. And that's obvious reasons for those who have done sausages before. It's a recommendation because they're only fresh meat, keep them in the fridge overnight to firm up. Because if you go to, especially when you're cryobacking, if you cryoback fresh sausages, you're likely to split them open and they flatten down and they all squash out the ends. If you get them a bit firmer overnight, they don't have a tendency to blow out and split. Hence why we all like to leave our sausages that 24 hours before we bag them. So we've got the sausages and we're all done. That's a commercial one. But that's good too. That sucks better, but the thing is mint, because it sucks so hard, mint. Sausage is insane that they got the most, most moisture and the moisture sucks out of the bag when it's sucking the air out and when it tries to hot seal it because it's wet now because the moisture comes out, sometimes they don't seal right. You'll find some of your sausage when you pull them out the bags will be split but that's just sausages and mince in general isn't it? Everything else because it hasn't got that moisture content, vacuum seals well. 
pains, I think. Nick's got ahead of me here, she's got a pile in front of me, so I better pull my finger out and start try backing some of these to give her a hand. After all, that was my job, so. Oh. Righto, guys. I always did my job, you know what it's like. <laughs> I'd put my weight in this team. Righto, guys, so on that note, have a good morning, have a great afternoon, and a terrific evening, guys, wherever you're watching this from, and we'll catch you later.